Hi everyone, Neuralar here, and today I'm going to demonstrate hooking up an inverter to my house's electrical system for emergency backup purposes. Now, earlier I had done a video on hooking up a different inverter, this uh, Xantrex inverter, something like this, uh, and I did a video on how not to connect an inverter to your house mains. And I use this as an example connected to a standard automotive battery. That's what most people envision when they think of this. But there are a number of pitfalls to doing it that way, and uh, I'd encourage you to watch that video if you're not familiar with, with the pitfalls of that. But if you use something like this and try to connect it up to your house, you're likely to come up with three different uh, issues. One, you'll probably destroy your inverter. Two, you have an electrocution hazard for multiple reasons. And three, it's very possible that you may destroy some appliances in your house. For example, in my home, I have seven smoke alarms, and all of them would be destroyed if I used an inverter like that to connect it to my house. So, I'm not going to use that one. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to try to do this. Now, I haven't done this before, so I think it should work, uh, but uh, let's find out. And I'm going to use a different inverter for that. Let me show you which one that is. And this is the inverter that I'm going to use. This is a 1000 amp hour battery box connected to a pure sine wave, 3000 watt, high efficiency, continuous duty inverter. I made a whole video series on constructing this battery box, I made plenty of videos on inverters, but this inverter here is capable of being hardwired. That is a requirement for this. Go ahead and watch that other video how not to connect an inverter to your house mains for a better explanation, but I just wanted to show you inside the battery box quick. There are a bunch of batteries in here, about 1,000 amp hours worth. And I put it on wheels so I can roll it around, roll it around and uh, I think it should work pretty well. So I'm going to try hooking this up to my house today. Now there's really only two ways to properly connect an inverter to your house for emergency applications. One is to just run extension cords everywhere. Of course, that has its own hazards. Most people don't want that approach. The second is to get a transfer switch installed. A transfer switch disconnects you from utility power and connects you to an auxiliary outlet that you can use to uh, power with a generator or an inverter uh, so that it's impossible to have both the generator and the utility power connected at the same time. That's very important. However, I'm going to do it the poor man's way, and I would not recommend this method. It is technically against code in most jurisdictions, but I'm going to use what I like to call a suicide cord. It has a male end on both ends. Not that safe, but it can work. This is my electrical panel with the cover removed so that you can see what is inside. Now, it is absolutely imperative if you're going to do a backfeed method that you must turn off the main breaker. That's extremely important. If you don't, you can either destroy your inverter and uh, possibly other things, or electrocute somebody outside working on your utility lines. If these lines are broken somewhere outside, you don't turn this off and you backfeed. These are now energized, and the line workers outside will think that there's no power there, but there easily could be if you're backfeeding. Um, of course, if they repair that while your generator is still connected, it uh, is going to be destroyed because it's now connected to both. So you need to turn this off. I'm not going to do that right now because it's dark and then we'll be in the dark. But I also want to mention quickly how these are wired up. You have a single ground in the middle, that's a neutral, current carrying neutral, and you have two phases. One here, one over here. Each one of these is 120 volts. So if you connect between these two lines, you get 120 volts. Connect between these two, you get 120 volts. If you connect between these two, you get 240 volts. And that's how you get, that's how you get the two voltages in your house. Now, in a breaker panel like this, you can see the way it is arranged. You have the main disconnect here. <clears throat> All of the grounds are connected on both sides here to buses. Ground and neutral is tied together 
and you have two rows of breakers. This is pretty typical construction in the United States at least. I don't know about elsewhere. And it looks, by looking at this, like this line up here would feed this whole column, and this line would feed this whole column. However, that is not how it works. If you look at the bottom, you can see the way that the fingers are arranged. Every other breaker is fed by this line or that line. So that means that these two top breakers are fed by one of the phases, these next two are fed by the other one, these by phase one, these by phase two, these by phase one, these by phase two, etc. on down the line. And they do that so that you can get 240 volts with a single breaker. This one here connects to this line and this line. That gives you 240 volts. If they uh, just did it by side, you'd have to have a breaker that's the full width, and that's just not how they're arranged. So they do it this way. And this is important to this discussion because if I move over here to the cover where everything is labeled, let's say that I connect my back feed source to the garage outlet circuit. That is circuit number 20. And if I connect it to this one, then every other circuit will be powered and every other circuit will not. This will be powered, this won't. This will be powered, this won't. This will be powered, that won't. This will be powered, that won't. This will be powered, that won't. So half the stuff in your house will work and half of it won't work. And none of the 240 volt appliances will work. So you need a way of powering both phases. Now, you could tap into a 220 volt outlet, say for a, uh, a dryer or something, but uh, my method is just gonna use two 120 volt outlets. So I plan on connecting this inside my garage. So the garage outlets here are on circuit 20, and I have a second garage outlet installed that I put down here, which is on the opposite phase. This one is connected, this one, this one, and this one. So this 29, circuit 29, is on the other phase. So if I power both this one and this one, both phases in my house will be powered. And let me draw a little bit, little diagram to better describe what I'm talking about here. So these are the three lines coming into your house. Those are those three large cables that I'd showed. I'm going to label this one line. I'll label this one line 180 degrees. That's essentially what it is. 180 degrees out of phase of this one. And the one in the middle is neutral. Now there's also a ground in your house and I'll just put that out here, and ground is tied directly to neutral. They're one and the same, the only difference is that neutral carries current, ground does not, or at least it's not intended to. That's why there's ground fault interrupters, because if it does carry current, then there's a problem and it'll trip. That's important, I'll get to that later. Now, I have two different circuits in my garage, and I plan to use those to power my whole house, both phases, this line and line 180 degrees. So those outlets, are, I'll just draw them this way, excuse the crudeness of my drawings, but they have uh, one large prong, one small prong, and a ground. Now, the large prong over here, that is neutral. So these are just going to go out here and tie up to neutral. And they're just connected like that, connected directly together. Now, the hots, one of these goes to this line, and this one goes to this line. And ground, well, ground actually goes directly to the same node. Ground and neutral tied directly together. And I'll get to why that's important, but I just want to say what's maybe obvious. You need to get the correct polarity on your two cables. One cable goes to this outlet, one goes to this outlet, and if you reverse the neutral and the hot to either phase, they are not isolated. They're tied to this same node. So you will end up with a shorted inverter output and bad things will happen. So you need to be sure that your polarity is correct on both of your plugs. And this brings me to an interesting point. I have two cables. I have two circuits. Why can't I use two inverters? I mean, that would get me around the issue of having both of these tied together, right? I just use two inverters and then it doesn't matter anymore? Well, actually, it does matter. 
And once again, it is imperative. You can only use one inverter. You cannot use two unless you have a very expensive split phase inverter. And uh, if you have one of those, then you're probably not watching this video because you already know what you're doing. But for almost everybody out there, you cannot use two inverters and power the two phases separately. You must get just one, so that's why I have a fairly large 3000 watt inverter. That should be able to power pretty much everything in my house with uh, very few compromises. Now at first, having two inverters might seem like the ideal situation, because you have one here, you have one here, you connect them to the same battery, and then you power your two circuits. You have a line, a neutral, and a line. So you take your line and neutral from each of your two 120 volt inverters. And there's two ways to hook these up, right? You can connect the neutral of both of them to here, and the line to here, line to here, and now what do you have? Well, you have the two lines are connected together, two neutrals together, so you would expect to have 120 volts on each one of these, and no volts here. However, that's not what you'll get. The other way to connect it is to connect this line to here, this neutral to here, this line to here, and this neutral to here. And now they're in series. So what you might expect to get is 120 volts here, powered by this inverter, 120 volts here, powered by this inverter, or 240 volts, powered by both of them. But it doesn't work that way. And if you try either of these two methods, you will likely end up with two outcomes. One, both inverters will be fried, and two, you may permanently damage appliances in your home. This is a very, very bad idea. Do not do this. And the reason that this won't work in either configuration is consider the situation where this inverter is not turned on, and this one is. You have various loads in your house that are 240 volts. They are typically very large loads, very low impedance. There might only be a couple of ohms between these two. So basically they're just shorted together. And that means that this inverter will be back feeding through that appliance into this one. And if this one would shut off for any reason, get overloaded, whatever, it's going to end up being fried by this inverter. And that will be permanently damaged. You cannot repair it. This inverter you'll have to throw away. And likely this one will get damaged too in the process. Now the other reason that this doesn't work is because these two are not synchronized. They have to be perfectly synchronized or perfectly out of sync. One of the two. If they're not, what you'll end up with is the voltage between these two nodes will not be 0 volts or 240 volts. You'll end up with what's called a beat frequency. You'll slowly get a 60 hertz voltage that rises up to 240 volts, and then it'll slowly go back down to 0 volts, slowly back up to 240 volts, slowly back down to 0 volts, and your appliances will be in a constant brownout condition. And that is a very horrible condition to have them in, and they can easily overheat and fail. And uh, unless you really want to replace your $6,000 air conditioner in your house, don't try this. Just use one inverter and connect it the way that I'm showing here.